especially as you're recruiting new people in your business all the time, it's so important that you get them on training like this or any type of training really that will help them get better results with leads and prospecting. Let me tell you why. Imagine if you recruit three new people and they go and they buy leads or they do some other type of marketing. They talk to the people that respond and they don't get good results. The people don't sign up. They get hung up on they're going to lose interest in working with you, that your downline isn't going to be very successful. They'll get turned off, not want to do it again. They're going to get scared of picking up the phone. And the long-term results of that is really not good for your business. Now, on the other hand, imagine you recruit three people and you take a couple hours. You do a training like this and you can contact us for more information on other types of training and your business as well. Whatever business you're in usually has training as well on dial scripts and calling leads. Ask your upline, ask the people that are successful. Basically just invest in training first. So imagine you, when you have your new people you recruit, you do this hour-long training with us and other trainings with your company. You really get prepared. And now when you, new people you recruit pick up the phone and dial leads for the first time, call back their warm market leads for the first First time call back the leads they generated from their own ads for the first time and they get good results they don't get hung up on they get good results they're going to be fired up and they're going to keep doing the advertising they're going to keep building your business and so it's so important that they get this basic training and you get this basic training to make sure you're going to get the best results you can right away so we're a few minutes after now I bet most people have joined our webinar so I'll go ahead and do some introductions. My name is Brooke Hewlett, and I'm a manager of a lot of the lead stores that are on the Internet, as well as just in general a marketing consultant to the lead generation industry with dealing with home businesses and network marketing. And today we're really proud to offer you absolutely free an hour-long training with Monty Taylor. He's been in the network marketing industry about 25 years. He's successfully built some very large organizations. Right now he has a book on Amazon called Objections Handled, which will give you, I think it's about, uh, it's 101 scripts. You can use to handle common objections when calling leads or any type of marketing over the phone really and in addition he's been the CEO of two network marketing companies this guy is really experienced his advice is very sound and I said this earlier I'm gonna say it again in case you join our call late I've worked with a lot of the top earners and many companies and the advice he's giving you is the same techniques used by top earners and almost every organization I've worked with so take note and take this really seriously and you're going to get some great results with your leads and your prospecting so without further ado I'm going to welcome Monty Taylor and get this webinar started Monty are you there I'm here Brooke thank you so much what a great uh, appreciate your kind words and your opening and and thank you Brooke appreciate it oh you're welcome everyone thank you for being here congratulations to all of you for taking the time to improve your skills and be more effective, better at communication, and, and really better at what people, prospects especially, need or want so they can move forward with you. What we're going to do on this is underscore some concepts that support calling, communicating, presenting, closing, and following up with purchase leads. And the truth is they're principles, and they'll work with uh, warm market leads as well. But this is really going to make a difference for you. And we want to share some of those principles and techniques. Here's what we'll cover. The single most important thing you must do, a mindset for prospecting with leads, and I think some of the things will surprise you a bit. We're going to talk about basic objections managing principles, and I think you're going to hear some things you may have never heard before. They'll really help you, I promise. Some nuggets you can use now. I want to introduce you to the power prospecting formula and also, as Brooke said, how to get these scripts, this presentation, and some free videos. We have some free videos for you, no strings attached, that will help you with all of your prospecting. You're going to love them. So that's what we're going to do. My goals and Brooke's goals for this presentation, we, just, we want to help you. We hope that afterwards, if you're new in particular, you say to yourself, I can do this. And that's the kind of feedback we're getting. People say, I can do this now that you've showed me exactly what to do. We're hoping that what we show you, you say this is simple enough that it becomes leads buying becomes part of your prospecting for new business plan. And if it's never quite worked for you, you say, wait, now I'm going to do it right. We want you to be more efficient, effective, and comfortable in all of your prospecting, including warm market, because as we said, these are principles, uh, not, just, uh, not just techniques. 
We want you to be able to grow your team and organization more quickly so you're better at helping people. That's your team and your prospects. And also, boy, is this important, knowing when you're wasting your time. I don't know about you. I hate wasting my time. So let's get right into it. What's the single most important thing you must do? This may surprise you a little bit. Very important. Be prepared. But here's what we mean. Number one, be prepared with a tracking follow-up and calendar system. Now, this might seem obvious to you, to some of you, but I've got to tell you, I've seen so many people jump into leads and what they're working with is a yellow pad system or, or they're trying to figure a system out for themselves. That's fine, but typically they're not effective. You want to get a really good calendar system. I'm just putting mine here. I don't have stock in the company. I happen to use Planner Pad, and boy, I've tried a bunch of things, including trying to use all my Apple iPhones and iPads and everything for tracking. Not effective, not for me anyway. So just find a system that works for you. Sometimes we'll say big doors swing on small hinges, and hinges are high leverage items. Those hinges aren't great. Your door is not going to open. And this is a small hinge that opens a big door. Get the, get the little hinges right, or you can forget opening the big door. Have a system and use it. Use it right. Number two, sometimes people, I think we're all the same. We want to jump right into the how-to. But before how-to, you want to think about your mindset. And I want to share some thoughts with you that I really believe will make a difference in all your prospecting. Number one, clarity of, the intent, clarity of intention. Oprah talks about this if you watch her at all. She's been saying it for years. She says, intentions rule the universe. And I believe that she's right. It's, it's so important to be aware of your overall intentions when you're prospecting. Let me tell you what I mean by that. Most of the time when we listen to these calls, we'll find that a lot of people prospecting are in what you might call a survival mode. It's all about them and their story, and they got to get the deal, they got to get the clothes, they got to talk the person into it. That's called survival, by the way. And people will read it, whether you think they can or not, and they're going to be very, very resistant. You may not even know why they're resistant. So what do you want to do? You want to have the intention of just helping people. Get that mindset, get into contribution rather than survival. You want to have that posture, get into the contribution mode, and I'll tell you, you'll have much less angst, it's more fun, you'll be able to read people better, and they're going to be much less resistant to you. So that's number one, clarity of intention, very important. I'm going to talk about the Jay Abraham hypothesis. Uh, I've known Jay casually for years, followed him for almost 30 years, had the opportunity to have actually business consultations with him. He's amazing. Let me go back. What Jay says I believe is true, and it will help you with your prospecting. He says, most people are silently begging to be led. Now, what does he mean by that, and how does it fit into professional prospecting, is he's telling you that most people, when they're listening to you, they want you to take the lead. So be a professional. Posture yourself that you're a professional, you have a plan, and take the conversational lead. And the key to that, really, if you want a better business, ask better, question, better questions. The key to taking the lead is to learn to ask great questions and be the better listener of everybody on the call. So that's number three in the, the prospect. The next area is change of focus strategy. This one's very, very simple. I think I said it before in a way in intention. That's get your arrows out. Focus on your prospect. Get your arrows off of yourself. We've listened to these calls and we've list, listened to people huff and puff and talk all about themselves. It's really annoying and it's not what people are interested in. You want to be interested in your prospect. Don't try to be interesting. Be interested in your prospect. Don't try to be interesting. It, it just doesn't get results. Sell what people are buying. It's a less trusting, less marketing-friendly world out there, folks. Most people feel on some level, whether they tell you or not, that they're being taken for a ride. They don't know what they don't know. And when they feel this way, whether they tell you or not, whether they express it or not, they just wind up saying, this is not for me or no thank you. Your job is to prove that you understand them and you're not just paying them lip service. So how can you provide value to people when you're prospecting? Give people your attention and listen. Sell empathy. 
sell attention, sell connectedness, sell leadership, take the conversational lead, and clarity, that's what people are buying. They crave it. Uh, Very simply, listen more, talk less, ask better questions. Be the better listener on the conversation. It requires some time investment, but boy, does it pay off. So that's your master prospector's uh, plan. Here's number three, and be prepared with your scripts and communication plan. Let's talk about these. We're going to uh, your leave a message script, a connecting script, a qualifying script, an invitation presentation script, and a closing script. You want to have all of these, including next steps and follow up script, done in advance. I still work from scripts. Do I have most of them memorized? Yes. But are they in front of me? Absolutely, at all times to remind me to keep me on track, just like my uh, follow-up system. You want to have scripts. Do I read them? A little bit of them sometimes, but most people would never know. This is so important. 80% of this is being prepared, and if you're prepared, following up with purchase leads is easy. It's fun. It's trouble-free. So let's go into each of these scripts. Number one, develop and write your own leave-a-message script. Now, why would you do that? Well, Brooke would tell you that in listening to thousands of lead calls or more, more than half the time, I don't know the exact numbers, but I'm just going to say more than 50% of the time, you don't get anybody on the phone. What you get is an answering machine or you get their answering service. So you want to be prepared with a leave a message script. Now, this seems obvious, but we want to teach you a little bit about these so you do it in a way that begins to connect with the person. So here's mine, and I'm going to take you through this real quickly. Borrow from this or use your own communication style, but have a good leave a message script. So I'll say something like this. Hi, Mary. This is Monty Taylor from Orlando, Florida, and you spoke with one of our agents. Or if it's different for you, you purchased a lead that uh, is from a form, or you filled out a form saying that you had interest in learning more about our home-based income project. I wanted to follow up and get you all the information you need and answer any of your questions. Could you please return my call at? I really think you'll like what you learned, and I'm looking forward to speaking with you. If I happen to be on another call, please leave your number and the best time to call you back. Once again, Mary, Monty Taylor, have a great day. Now, it just takes... 15 or 20 seconds to say that, but I want you to understand there's more to this than just leave a message. Don't be casual about it. Casualness causes casualties. In red, I've put some of the key words. Hi, Mary. I'm using her name. I want to connect. This is Monty Taylor from Orlando, Florida. I want her to know I'm a real person. This is where I'm from. This is my real name. You spoke with one of our agents saying you had an interest in learning more about our home-based income project. Now, I'm tossing that out because I think we toss out opportunity or or business opportunity a little too much. I happen to use home-based income project. You find something that works for you and try to find something that's a little different than just business opportunity. Up to you. I wanted to follow up and get you all the information you need and answer any of your questions. The reason I'm using all the information you need might be obvious, might not be. Very simply, I wanted to know this is not a call, Mary, to beat you up and drag you into something. Uh, It's to get you the information you need, you requested. I'm here to serve you. That's the message I want to send with my message. Could you please return my call? I really think you'll like what you learn. I want to send Mary the message that I really, I'm really i futuring here, looking forward to speaking with you if I happen to be on another call. And then once again, this is Monty Taylor. Have a great day, Mary. So there's, there's really a formula in that message script. Write your own, one that's comfortable for you and your communication style. But learn some of these key words because after doing thousands of these, these can help you. Now, let's talk about a final message script. There's two message scripts. I only leave two messages. It's entirely up to you because you invested in, the, in your leads. You may want to leave three or four. I just leave two. That's it. This is almost the same with a couple of keyword changes. You'll see these. I want to show them to you. Feel free to borrow. Hi, Mary. This is Monty Taylor from Orlando, Florida, leaving a second and final message. By the way, I do that in a friendly, inviting manner, not, Mary, this is Monty, and this is about it for you, baby. I'm not leaving that message. I want to leave the message that Mary can connect with me. I'm a good person, and I'm interested in helping her. 
As a reminder, and I go back through that, saying you had an interest in learning more about our home-based income project. I wanted to try you one more time and get all the information you need and answer any of your questions. This is key, by the way. Mary, if you're still interested in home-based income, please return my call. I really think you'll like what you learn. I'm looking forward to speaking with you. Once again, this is Monty Taylor, and I give my contact number. Hope we get to speak soon. So I wanted to highlight in red some of those words. Uh, don't be uh, foreboding with this. Uh, uh, this is an opportunity to connect with people. They're hearing your message. They're hearing your voice. That's all they know about you. So write a good uh, message script and final message script. So be prepared with your scripts. We have your leave a message scripts and final message script. Connecting script, I want to talk about that. A lot of people think connecting is just getting the person on the phone, but it's more than that. It's so vital in connecting to begin to develop a rapport. So if I do get Mary on the phone, I'm going through the same script, but when I get her on the phone, the, one of the first things I'm going to say is, Mary, I was hoping we could visit for a few minutes. By the way, isn't that what we do with friends? We visit, okay? for a few minutes so I could get you all the information you need and answer any of your questions. Now this is where we're connecting and qualifying. And in red, this is so key. Make sure this comes out of your mouth if you connect with Mary. Is this a good time to speak? So important. Most of the time when people call me, you have to be honest with yourself, most of the time it's not convenient for me. They're not sitting there waiting for your call in most cases. So ask, is this a good time to speak? And I'm going to tell you, a lot of times, Mary or whoever is going to say, no, I'm just going off to work, or I have to teach a class, or I'm a nurse, or my children are here, I'm babysitting, grandmother, whatever, all kinds of reasons that they can't speak. So be prepared for this, and be prepared to say, oh, sorry this is an inconvenient time. Just a quick question before you go, are you still interested in learning more about home-based income? That's a fair question. Because why have a conversation with Mary? It's not a good time to speak if she's not interested any longer for whatever reason. So you want to have these down. Is this a good time to speak? Sorry this is inconvenient. Are you still interested in learning more about a home-based income? And if Mary says yes, but it's not a good time for me, this is where you go with this. I understand. Mary, so we don't have to chase each other. other. What would be a day and time we could put, both put down on our calendars? I know you're in a hurry. I'll phone you back then. And what you want to do is see if you can close Mary on an agreed-on time to have the conversation to do what? To get her the information that she requested because she was looking for home-based income, right? So confirm that and ask the question, is this still the best number to reach you? She says, yes, it is. Great. She may give you another number. Great. Then I say this, use it if you like, it works great. Okay, Mary, I promise I'll phone you then because I want Mary to know that I keep my promises. Before you go, Mary, just one last thing. If you're going to estimate the weekly income you'd like to make, what would you say? Now, she may answer or she may not, but sometimes they'll tell you. She may say, I don't know, say, no worries, I'll call you tomorrow or whatever the agreed on time is. She may say, oh, four to 500 a week, whatever the number is. I just say, great, thanks. Now, we're going to ask this question a little bit later, but at least you know you have connected, said the right things, you're a good person, you're going to get her all the information she needs, and you know the weekly income that she'd like to make. That's good information. I write it down in my uh, follow-up calendar so when I call her back, Okay? Confirm the time and appointment. A couple of quick notes. Keep your promises. Keep your appointments. Uh, you have an opportunity to, be, to begin revealing your character. And it, it says a lot about you if you call back at 1 o'clock, uh, if that's the agreed on time in the daytime, try to do that whenever possible. Sometimes uh, I'll say, Mary, would you like my phone number just in case something comes up for you? And most of the time, they'll take your number, and I've had some prospects call and say, hey, something changed for me. I love that, the prospects revealing their character now. And I may say, would you like me to send you a reminder? And if so, I'll email or text a reminder. Glad to do it, because what am I there for? To help Mary get all the information that she needs. Make sense? This is good stuff. 
and, it, and this is not theory. This works. You can use it. This comes from thousands of calls. Okay. Connecting and qualifying. I just want to remind you before we leave this particular script that uh, you want to look for opportunities to build rapport. Network marketing, or if you're, you call it direct sales for you, or referral marketing, um, party plan, whatever your particular opportunity is, it still relies on relationship building, and connecting and creating rapport is essential. I mean, this is foundational. From the moment you encounter a prospect on the phone or in person, look for ways to begin building rapport. Uh, rapport is like money. The less you have it, the more valuable it is. And it just, this just makes a big difference. So look for ways to create rapport and send this message with your body. Send it with your mind, with your feeling. Brooke and I have talked about this, what she does. You want to be saying to a person, whether you're actually saying it or not, find a way to send that message. You seem like an interesting person. I'd like to get to know you better. If you can get that message through with all of your scripts and the way that you handle yourself, wow, your prospecting is going to go to whole new levels, I promise you. So we've talked about these so far, qualifying script. I just want to come back to it real quickly and make sure that you know, is this a good time to speak in your next qualifying script when you have a prospect on the phone is to ask this. Great. To begin, Mary, could you tell me how much money you would like to make on a weekly basis? Now, there's a reason for asking that question. Don't forget it. It's going to set up almost everything you do after this. So that's why we have an arrow here. This is a vital script, a vital qualifying script. Tell me how much money you'd want to make on a weekly basis. When your prospect gives you a number, you want to come back with something like this. And this is going to set up your invitation, okay? Your prospect comes back and says, uh, 650 a week is just about perfect. You say, perfect, or that's great, whatever the way you communicate, I'd say perfect. I believe our business could help you earn that level of income. And if it's true, by the way, you could also add, we have many people in our business earning that income and more. Now, don't say if it's not true. If it is true, we have many people in our business earning that income and more. Now, everything you've done at this point with all of your scripts is to set this up to lead to a presentation. This is where you're going. You're taking Mary through the concept of, is this a good time? Uh, how much money would you like to earn on a weekly basis? Yep, we have people in our business that are earning that or more. I think you could earn that with our business. Where you're headed at this point is right here would it be worth 10 minutes of your time to find out how? Would it be worth 10 minutes of your time to find out how? Great invitation, presentation, setup. That's where you want to go, wow, you're on your way right here. Now, a couple of notes on this. If it's more than 10 minutes, uh, tell the truth. It's so annoying to have somebody, would it be worth 10 minutes? Oh, uh, except for it's an hour. That doesn't work. Whatever your presentation, invita excuse me, presentation is, and we'll talk about that in a moment, you know, uh, let them know. If it's 12 minutes, 8 minutes, 15 minutes, let them know. Would it be worth 15 minutes of your time to find out how? Your prospect says, yes, here's where you go. You come back and say, great, Mary, we have an outstanding introductory audio for example. Now, whatever you use, I don't know what you use, webinars, audios, streaming video presentation. My two favorite are streaming video links uh, and audios that are a quick uh, eight, nine, ten minute overview. So I'll say, we have a great present introductory presentation. I think you'll enjoy it. will answer most of your questions. Shall we look at it now or shall we listen to it now? I'm closing to take Mary right there and listen or watch now. Okay? You want to schedule and confirm your introductory presentations. My advice for best results, and I think Brooke and I have talked about this before, stay with them if you can. If you have time, lead them right by the hand, three-way conference call in. If you've got somebody that's gone this far with you, I don't like to send them off. Go watch this video link and get back to me. Some prospectors do that. That's fine. But prospects come this far with me. I'm going to go with them and take another 10 minutes. Go to the website together, or if you're setting them up, with local leads and going to a live meeting, great. Go with them. Don't send them. Uh, wow, big mistake in my opinion. 
Let them know you'll answer any questions, concerns after the presentation. Always confirm your next steps conversation. Let me say this, uh, uh, this real important. Avoid, in my opinion, humble opinion, if you will, avoid oral presentations where after Mary says, yes, uh, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready for the presentation. And then you uh, do a, uh, for, forgive me for saying this, but you do a 20-minute verbal puke. I don't believe it works. It's never been effective. I'm fairly glib, and I can do it. It's still not effective. It's not duplicable. It sends the wrong message. It tells Mary that, oh, if you're going to be in our business, you have to be able to uh, yak, yak, yak for 20 minutes. Don't do it. Keep it short. Qualify. Invite. And then take her to your tool, whatever that tool is, a streaming video, streaming audio. Avoid oral presentations. So. Let's go into the closing script. I think I had one other thing I wanted to say before that. Um, let me just check. Yes, sometimes, before we get into closing, I just want to add this. Sometimes when you're trying to close the person on going to a presentation with them, sometimes they'll block there a little bit or they'll hesitate. And what comes up is they'll throw up their first objection, so to speak. And this comes up, and I want you to be ready for it. Be prepared, because it's going to come. It happens to me, and I'm ready. I'm waiting. They'll, they'll say something like, well, 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 before we go there, how much is this going to cost? Now, they don't even know what this is. They haven't seen a thing. So you want to be ready for that. It's real easy. Uh, in fact, Brooke, remind me to put in a slide on this, because I'm doing this on the fly a little bit. But uh, Feedback if Mary says, and what's this going to cost before we look at anything? Say, Mary, that's a great question, or that's an important question. Do you have concerns about cost? Let Mary talk about it. And then tell Mary you have great news. There's always a cost to start a business, but with your program, we have ways to get you started that almost anyone can afford. Here's my suggestion, Mary. Just watch the presentation. I'll go with you. Then we'll go over the small startup costs. Then you decide you deserve to see what this is all about first and decide for you, does that sound fair? So you can be ready for this. This is so easy. It's, I've done it many, many, many times. Some people will throw up that block, just say, hey, great question. Thanks for, thanks for bringing that up and deal with their, most of the time the first block is how much does this cost? I'm going to say 80% of the time they haven't seen anything. So be prepared for that. Um, Next, let's go to closing. This is so important. Now, this is, notice this. It says, why do we close and convince is crossed out? Well, a lot of people think you're closing to get the money or closing to get them into your deal or closing, getting them to say yes. And that's not what closing is all about, in my opinion. Let me teach you another paradigm. Just consider this, if you will. The real reason you close is to help people to provide clarity, direction, next steps, and a plan. I'd like you to consider the, with prospecting as a master prospector that what you really do is help people get clarity. And to do that, you ask questions, really good questions. You're, the, you're kind of their thinking partner. You're on their side of the table. So you want to get all their questions, concerns, and objections out in the open. Don't, don't hide from their questions or concerns. Someone may actually come into your program, but everything's not answered, and they're out in a week because you never dealt with everything they're concerned about. It's happened over and over. So closing is about getting everything out in the open because you want to help them and address anything that keeps them from getting what it is they said they want. And you want to determine if you're wasting time and energy. So, and the other thing is professional networkers close. Those of you that have had the opportunity to hear professional networkers, they've got great closing questions. So I want to give you some of those, share some of those with you so you understand. But think about this closing par uh, paradigm. So here's a, a kind of a softball question. After a presentation, you can say, Mary, I'm interested in your opinion. What did you like best about what you saw or heard or experienced with the presentation? And what you want to do is give feedback with that question from Mary. So she's telling you, she's got concerns. I'm telling you, she has concerns. They came up as she was watching or listening to your presentation. Get them out on the table and deal with them. I'm going to show you how to do that. Here's another one. Use it all the time. Mary, this is after a presentation. On a scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being low and 10 being high, how would you rate your interest in moving forward and creating that weekly income we spoke about? See how this all ties together? In this scale of 1 to 10, 
do it do it uh, lighthearted and and fun. It's not heavy on a scale of one to ten. And I'll show you a little more about that. That's a key closing question. I use it all the time. I've taught it to many people. I, I've had feedback people coming back. You know, I heard it before. I never really understood when to use it. So let me teach you how to use it. I usually start up with on one to ten. Someone's seen a presentation, or maybe I've answered three or four. Usually answered three or four questions. Then I'll close. And what I'm doing is getting everything out of the table. I'll start. I'll sum up, and it's easy to sum up. Mentally go backwards and say, Mary, you mentioned you're looking to make extra income from home, right? And she'll say yes. And Mary, you reviewed our our audio and you asked some great questions. So you've just summed up what happened. That's easy to do. I have an important question. Set the stage and pause a second because it's an important question. Mary, on a scale of 1 to 10, if 1 is low and 10 is high, 1 is low, 10 is high, how would you rate your interest in moving forward together and getting started? Put Mary lovingly, gently, professionally in the hot seat. That's what you want to do to get everything out on the table. That's what it's for. And if you get a 5 or less, you're probably wasting your time. You can certainly say, Mary, well, what's missing for you or what's holding you back? Most people, if they have an interest, will come back and say six or seven, sometimes eight. I'm going to say, great, what else would you need to move to you to a nine or ten? I want to know what's blocking them, what's, what's holding them back. And if they say eight or ten, I'm going, great, let's get started. I've got a plan. I'm excited about working with you. If you're like me, Mary, you're going to move to an 11 when you see what a great decision you've made. Use this one to ten. Uh, this is simple to do. It's something that will really help you. Now, at this point, we've spent, uh, I don't know how much time, um, let me look at it real quick, 30 minutes into this presentation, and it's all about your preparation. As I said before, this is 80% of the hard work that it comes in calling prospects and leads. But if you'll do all this, you've done the 80%, you're prepared, and you have a playbook I'm going to give it to you on one slide. By the way, as Brooke said, all of these slides, we're going to show you at the end how you can get them all, the scripts that you're, you've seen already and the ones that are coming. They're all there for you. They're free, no strings. We want you to have them. But you've got a playbook, and here it is. Here's your leads playbook. You've got your tracking follow-up calendar system, and you're going to use it. Okay? Someone says how much money they want to make. Before you call them back, when you call them back, you have a note about it somewhere. You have your master prospect mindset, master prospector's mindset, rather, and you've thought about your intention. And you're going to change your focus, and you're going to sell what people are buying. And you have your scripts and communication plan. All of these scripts are written out. Certainly, I have my style of communication. Brooke has hers. Write it out. But take a look when you download these slides and understand the key words in those scripts and communication plan and those three or four qualifying questions and, and that all lead you to your presentation and closing. They are gold, okay? So now it's time. Let's jump into, we, we promised you that we were going to teach you a, a system uh, that I call Avis. Uh, it, it is a system that I made up certainly from reading and studying over 25 years and working with lots of leaders, tr tremendous leaders and made this system up. It has nothing to do with the Avis rental car company, but it's a system of how you can easily and effectively manage almost any objection, question, or concern. Where this actually came from, and, and the reason I wrote my first book, Objections Handled, 101 scripts, actually there's 180 in it, but uh, 100, 101 sounded better. Uh, the reason I wrote it is I kept drilling down with some of my uh, team members and learned so many people are afraid to talk to people. What it's really about, it's rejection. When I say re not so much rejection, but they're afraid that the person's going to come back and say something that they can't handle and they feel rejected. It's that, it's that fear of all of that. And that's the reason I wrote the book. And I want to teach you a system you can use over and over. You're going to learn exactly how to clarify any issue by asking quality questions. Certainly we've talked about uh, the importance of listening carefully. So here's that, uh, let's talk about fear again just for a moment. Fear is that anticipation of future pain. Imagine if in talking to prospects you had absolutely no fear. You were fearless. 
It just didn't bother you because you knew you were prepared to handle anything that they came up with. That's what we want you to have. That's why we're doing this webinar. So let's get into it and teach you this system. I think you'll like it. We've all heard these. These are probably 80% of what you'll hear. I don't like to sell. I don't want to have to talk people into buying anything. Is this one of those pyramids? Or is this network marketing? Is this a network marketing scheme I'm not interested? Oh, I tried that once. Those things never work. Those products cost too, mit, cost too much. I'm way too busy. I don't have any time. Only a few people ever make money. I don't have any money right now. I'm broke, whatever. Anybody, anybody but me heard these over and over and over and over. So if you were ready for all of these and you knew how to handle them and take them in a positive direction, wow, would that make a difference? I'm going to teach you that, but before, realize there's a lot of BS out there, a lot of BS. What I mean is belief systems. Be aware of this in your mindset. The only belief system you can control or change is your own. If you're going to get, be a professional belief system changer, uh, wow, are you going to struggle. But you can influence people with integrity and, and, and uh, be the kind of prospector that influences people and takes them in a positive direction if you know what you're doing. So Avis is going to help you do this. You're going to, you're going to learn how to find out if they're resistant or totally against. Are they taking a position or not? Uh, are they tossing out an automatic script? Some people come back with, I'm too busy or I don't have any money. You don't even hardly have to say anything to them. I'm broke. It's like an automatic script for them. So let's, let's learn to figure out if that's an automatic script that they just tossed out. Did they really mean it? Do they just want to be heard? We all know some folks just want to be heard. They want, to, they want the floor. So they toss out an objection. They don't really mean the objection or concern. They just want to be heard. And we've all met people like that. What do they want to express? And then, importantly, are they open to learning more or next steps? So here's Avis. The A is for acknowledge. The two Vs are for verify and validate. We'll show you what I mean with a couple sample scripts. The I in Avis is for isolate. Boy, almost everybody leaves isolate out. And the S is for solve. So Avis is acknowledge, validate, verify, isolate, solve. Now, if you're looking at this, just relax a minute. We're going to teach it to you. It's quick. It's simple. And you can do this. This is so simple, it'll run underneath everything you do, almost like an automatic transmission. I'm going to show it to you. Okay. Now, a couple things. If you're not going to listen when you're trying to use the Avis formula, boy, are you going to struggle. Listening is respectful and supportive. Focused attention is what people crave. Don't commit the sin of being distracted, texting, doing something else. Wow, that's gotten out of hand. Now, some samples. A prospect says to you, for example, I just don't like to sell. You want to come back right away and acknowledge that, validate it, and verify it. And you can do this in one sentence. You can say to your prospect, Thanks so much for sharing that, or thanks so much for bringing this up. You're acknowledging it. You're validating it. Tell me about some of your experiences with selling. That's an acknowledgement, a validation, and a verification. You just verified that you heard because they said sell. You said, tell me about your experiences with selling. You just AVV'd with one sentence. Then your prospect responds. So your prospect might come back and tell you a whole story, two minutes, five minutes, eight minutes about selling. It didn't work. They struggled. They fell on their face. No one trained them. No one. Whatever the story is, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you listen. Maybe even take notes if you can. Listen carefully. And then come back with this. You may want to thank them first if they share for quite a long time. Say, you know, thank you so much for all of that. That was really enlightening to me. Mary, other than your concerns about selling, do you have any other concerns? That's a great question. This is called isolating the concern. This is going to pay off big time. Mary comes back and says, well, maybe about how much time I'd have to spend. All right? First thing she said was she had a problem with selling. You haven't dealt with it yet. Now she comes back and says, time. So you say, well, you're going to AVV. I'm so glad you mentioned your time concern and be sincere. Tell me about how much time you'd have to each week if it was a worthy project. The prospect, prospect says, oh, 10 to 12 hours a week. 
you say, okay, thank you, other than the time, is there anything else that worries you? Your prospect says, no, that's it. Bingo, you know all of your prospect's main concerns, selling and time. You've AVV'd, acknowledged, validated, verified, isolated. You know you have to solve the selling issue and the time issue, yes? And all of this fluff and all the other things that people say, it's begun to pull, it's, it's begun to pull away the veil of misunderstanding. And you have clarity. That's why I said bingo. And you have to learn to solve. So here's how I solve. This is just a couple of examples. There's many more examples in the book. I'll say something like this. Mary, if I could show you a way. Now, the reason the bracket is here is I'm going to solve for those issues. I solve her issues suggest a solution, what would you say? I put it back on her. Or if I could show you how, and I'm going to solve, what would you say? And then just keep repeating this over and over. Uh, address each of the concerns that she comes up with. I'll give you some examples in a moment. It's so easy. If I could show you a way or I could show you how, or if there was a way, depending on what she said. And all of these scripts are in objections handled. But let's, let me give you some real examples. If I could show you a way, if someone says they have a money problem, you say, if I could show you a way to get started with just a small investment in your business that you could potentially get back in just a few weeks, what would you say? You just solved it. Now, does it always solve it for them? Are they, may they come back with another concern or fear? Sure, just continue to do Avis. Maybe your prospect said, well, oh, God, I don't have any time. I'm so out of time. I'm frantic, frantic. And you say, if I could show you a way to use the few hours you have to build a real business with real sustainable income over the next 12 to 18 months, what would you say? They say selling. Mary talked about selling and time. These are my solutions for Mary. Mary, if I could show you how we could turn the fact that you have very little or no selling experience into a real plus with our special training, we have a great training for that, to build a real business with real income, Mary, what would you say? Or she says, MLM pyramids. If I could show you how our business model is not a pyramid, but a solid, ethical, proven business model that's helping thousands of people make full-time incomes on a part-time business, what would you say? Now, I want to remind you again that you're solving, and I can't do, we don't have the time to do 100 solutions here, but the truth is, it's most of the time, Brooke would share with you, it's 80% of the time, 90% of the time, it's the same 8 to 10 problems and you can learn those solutions and when you learn them these will roll off of your tongue uh, you'll solve for them they may throw you another uh, 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 objection or concern and you acknowledge validate verify isolate it and then solve okay this is going to improve your results uh, uh, a thousand percent dramatically some important takeaways master prospectors don't wing it they have their scripts and they have their solutions. Be authentic. Don't try to be clever. If, some, if, you, if someone uplines teaching you these clever comebacks that, that are snappy and make you look good but insult the prospect, it's not going to work. Boy, I've seen a bunch of those. Uh, they don't work with me, and they don't work with most people or the kind of people you want in your business. Always, th this is a tip, acknowledge the prospect's concerns. It's their concern. Don't argue with them. Acknowledge the concern and thank them for bringing up the concern. Validate their right to a point of view. You might as well. They have a point of view. You might as well validate it, right? And use expanding questions to gain clarity. This is so valuable. I, I blogged about this uh, over the last couple of weeks. Uh, great feedback on that from especially uh, people that haven't been in our industry. Learn to ask expanding questions. Here's a couple you can use. Please say more about that. That's interesting. Would you tell me more? I'm curious about something you said. What's your experience with network marketing? What's your experience with pyramids? What's your experience with selling? Just ask the question. I'm wondering what you meant by you don't have any time or you have limited time. Can you see how powerful these are? And, and simple. This is simple, simple stuff. You can learn these. You'll use them. You'll be a master prospector. So you're not in a war of words. You're not trying to win a battle of the minds. Don't pounce or try to overwhelm your prospect with snappy comebacks or one-liners. Take your time. Listen. Be thoughtful. Uh, 
We're, we're closing in here on the last few slides. We want to uh, make sure, stay with us, because we're going uh, we're gonna to show you how to uh, get all these slides and uh, maybe access some, uh, some offers from the, the lead store that sent you to this webinar. We want to give you some stuff that's valuable. Let me recommend that you consider the possibility of learning the power prospecting formula. This is years of work uh, that, that will teach you a simple formula uh, about connecting, then qualifying, turning your qualification of a person into an invitation, taking that invitation and rolling that right into the, your introduction or presentation, managing objections anywhere along the way, usually comes up after your introduction, learning to close to action, which so many folks don't do, and follow up, which, wow, people ignore this one. So this is the power prospecting formula, and I have uh, nine videos on this. They're completely free. They're bite-sized. They're, they're not long. They're not windy, and you can learn this entire formula. I think it'll make a big difference to you. They're our pleasure, Brooke and mine, to share them with you, and we'll show you how to do that. So this is the power prospecting formula. So where, where do you get these? Uh, go to my website, montytaylor.com forward slash lead dash slides. Write that down, lead dash slides. That'll take you to a page that's just for the folks on this webinar, and you'll be able to download a PDF with all of these slides. And uh, I'd also love it if you'd consider subscribing. What you'll get is a, a, a free report that people say they love. I'll show you how to do three-way calls, uh, maybe in a way you never even considered. Short, fast, effective, how to do super successful three-way calls. It's a free report, no strings. Free weekly prospecting tips via audio blog and a copy of this presentation via PDF. So very quickly, Brooke, just before I hand it back to you, let, let me share with you folks that I do have a book. I'm proud of it. Uh, I'll take 60 seconds and tell you about it. It has over 180 sample scripts, sample responses to the 10 most common objections, the power prospecting formula, Avis, some really neat, neat techniques, dozens of them for uncovering what people want and need in a way that's authentic, uh, outstanding non-sales closing scripts and things that uh, will really help you. And uh, one I'm really proud of, learn to respond effectively almost any time someone says, eh, so what do you do? Does that come up for you? You want to be ready for that actually in several different ways and how to make and just improve all of your communications. Uh, my book is uh, approaching being a bestseller in its uh, category. Here's some of the things that people said. I just want to share that with you. If you're serious about building a network marketing business, this book is a must. That wasn't my mother that wrote that, by the way. Uh, I, don't, I don't know these folks. Uh, Monty hit a home run on this one, and uh, something came in. Uh, someone said this book is an easy five-star. So I'd, I'd love for you to consider it. It's very inexpensive. I, I want to share it with you. My pleasure. So, Brooke, Thank you so much. Let me uh, uh, open it up back to you and leave this slide up. And as you're doing that, I'll, I'll go get us prepared for a Q&A session. Are you there, Brooke? I'm here. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Monty. This was a wonderful class. And I hope it's been helpful for everyone that's attended. Um, I just want to let everyone know that whatever um, lead store invited you to this free class today, be sure to go back to that lead store. You can go to the newsletter that invited you and, and see what lead store invited you. Look on the home page. There should be a special offer there. Right now, one of the leads we provide, we're, get, we're doubling your offer, your order for free. We're going to double that order for free. So if you order 100 leads, we're going to give you 100 extra free leads. I don't want to get too specific because for this class today, I invited people from probably 50 different companies here. So I'm not being too specific with you. I apologize for that. But if you have a question, you can send us an email. Our email is admin, A-D-I, admin, A-D-M-I-N, at leadcustomerservice.com, admin at leadcustomerservice.com if you want to email a question. Or you can call us. Our number is 800-881-4742. That's 800-881-4742. And I want to thank everyone for joining this class. I think this information is extremely valuable, whether you're experienced or especially if you have new people joining in on the call. And something we're working on, I'm not going to make any promises, but we're definitely working on getting some recorded videos of this class for you. So if you have people you're recruiting that want to see this a couple weeks from now, we'll have that available for you. We're, something we're working on. 
So, Monty, are we ready for? Uh... Yep, I, Brooke, I just put it on. So, so folks, and Brooke, thank you so much. Uh, by the way, folks, let me say, if you haven't seen or heard Brooke's training, I don't think anybody on the planet's heard as many calls as she has and, and uh, audit, audited them and helped train people. She's got some great trainings on those in video and in an audio. So stay tuned through your, your own lead store. Uh, they'll guide you to some of those trainings that she's doing for all of the lead story. There, you do a great job, Brooke. So, folks, if you if you have a question you want to ask, we, we would invite it. We'll do our best. What you do is press star six, and you should get a prompt that'll put you in the queue, and uh, we'll try to answer that question. So, raise your hand by pressing star six. You're going to have to be on a touch tone phone, and uh, it'll confirm by having you press one, and we'll see it, or we should see it, and we'll try to handle the question. Anybody have a question for us? We'd be happy to try to answer it. Let me look at the next page here. Star six, raise your hand if you have a question. Brooks, uh, so far, no questions. I think that's a good thing. Anyone at all, if you have a question, it would be our pleasure. If you want to tell us uh, what great voices we have, that's fine. <laughs> Just press star six. It should work for you. All right, questions coming in. I'm going to take that. Here we go. Okay, we opened your line. What's your question? Please introduce uh, yourself. Uh, Monty Wally Krelick. Uh, Monty, how many calls, I, I know this is a little tricky, but how many calls would an average networker uh, have to make before they get someone interested in, in their opportunity? How many calls would you have to go through? Yeah. Brooke, take first crack at that one, and then I'll give my opinion. I, sure. Sure. Um, so, it's, it, you know, obviously it's hard to tell. It depends on the business opportunity and the person and how, how good they communicate over phone. But in general, the first phone call that you make to someone, your expected sign-up ratio is probably 1% or less. The second call, probably 5% or less. The third, fourth, fifth. They say something like the probably the fifth call and on to that person, the fifth time you turn on, your sign-up ratio might be over 50%. Most people sign up after building a relationship with you. So if you're dialing prospects, don't expect to call them and they're going to hear it. And They might. But some definitely will. But overall, you're going to call them. They're going to maybe watch a presentation. They're going to want more information. You're going to do a follow-up call to give them more information, or they were busy with something, you're going to do another follow-up call. And after they get to know you after a number of calls and a number of times answering questions, typically then the fourth, fifth, sixth call, and that's when people start recruiting a lot. And that's where a lot of marketers don't do so well with leads. They expect that because these people are looking for a home business, they're going to pick up the phone and they're going to join right away. It's the same thing as if your best friend is – it may be interested. Some, the first time you sit down with them or tell them about it, they might not join right then. But after they've looked over things for a week, talked to their spouse, had some time to Google it and had, let it sink in and thought about it, usually then after about a week or so, they're going to be ready to join and you have to stick with them. And that's where a lot of marketers give up. They, they do the first call. They might do the first presentation and not follow up. And no matter what somebody says about it being the wrong time for them, people might say, it's not, I'm not sure yet. I'm not, I don't have the money. Uh, I, have, I have a family member in the hospital. I, I'm not paid. I, don't, you know, I, I have my other job. No matter what the objection is you get on those first few calls, the answer is you always follow up. So they say, you know what, my – numbers in the hospital or I'm just not sure I'm looking at other things so you know I totally understand that that's t t perfectly fine you know I have a lot of other people interested in this that I need to get back to so don't I apologize I'm gonna have to get going but what I want to do is um, when do you think that situation will change for you you think that you know your family will be out of the hospital in two weeks or you're going to get that next paycheck in two weeks so you could join whatever it is okay that situation is going to change do you mind if I schedule in and just I want to keep in touch with you, see how you're doing. Do you mind if I call you back in two weeks and just see, see how things are working out for you? Even if you call and they say, you know what, I picked another business and not yours. Say, oh, tell me about it. What was better about it? And that will give you a chance to introduce the differences between your businesses. Say, okay, well, that sounds great. You know, I would love to learn about that business. Do you mind? I'm going to let you do you that business. Do you mind if I call you back in a month and see how that worked out for you? I'm really curious if your business is better than mine. And they'll say, oh, of course. Definitely call me back and I can tell you. They're, they'll be looking forward to that call. So 
schedule them in a month later. Call them up and say, hey, how's that business working out? You know, in our company right now, we have all this going on. Um, you know, and it's going to open the door to talk about and that their business might not work out. And the people that I know that are – millionaires and retired from network marketing, those people that I know, what they do, they will call people back a year later. They don't get rid of a prospect unless that person says, you know what, never call me again. I'm definitely not interested. Never call me again. Okay, fine. No problem. Take you off my list. But in most cases, people aren't going to say that. Just say, I don't know. I've got this or that. They say, you know what, I totally understand. Let me, is there any other information I can get for you? Learn about them as Monte was teaching. You always want to dig in and get to know them, listen to them, and really whatever their issue is, even if they say they don't like it, but say, what is it about my business you don't like? I really want to under, – it would help me a lot if I knew that. And really dig in and listen to them because if you think about it, you know, the people in your life that listen to you and understand you and are there to help you, the people you could pick up the phone and call and are there to help you, how do you feel about those people in your life? They're probably your favorite people you love talking to. The same thing with the leads. So no matter what the objection is, just say, what is it about that? When is that going to change? What is it about that problem you have with my business? Or what is it, why is it that you're not interested in doing this so I can better understand um, maybe for the next person I talk to and let them share with you? So these people that I know that, do extremely well, they will keep scheduling follow-ups and they will call back and they keep notes in the calendar like Monty had. They'll call them back a month later and say, hey, hey, Monty, how's your, how's your kid doing in orchestra this month? I remember talking about that and how'd that business go you were working on? Just following up, checking in. And, and when you keep doing that, they're gonna, you're going to be that go-to person for them when they are ready to get started. So you might have a you know, 1% to 3% sign up the first week, but as you keep communication open with those people and you build relationships with those people in the following weeks and months, you'll continue to get signups, and you just never know when someone will be ready. I'm going to tell you one more thing about this. I know it's a long answer. One more thing. Also to prove that point, one of the things that I provide uh, with the company is, is aged leads. These are leads that are sometimes 30 or 40 days old that people call, and here's what happens sometimes. I'm, I'm so serious about this. We sell age leads. People call age leads and they say, hi, I'm calling, uh, you know, I want to share with you my XYZ business. And when they call this aged lead, the person says, you know what, I, I was interested in joining that company. Somebody already gave me the presentation. I wasn't sure about them, but I actually do. want. They never called me back. I'll join with you. That happens a lot. I see it happen a lot. So you want to stay in touch with people unless they, and over time, it does take time. You will sign up more people. So keep with the follow-ups. Keep using a calendar. And um, that's, that's my perspective on yeah. it. Monty? Good, good stuff. I want to say just real quickly, I'd like to – and it was a great question. Thank you. Once again, anybody, if you have a question, raise your hand by pressing star six, and that will put you in the queue. We'll take a couple more. But uh, my quick response to that would be, in the beginning, if you haven't called leads, track how many people you can get through that entire funnel that we showed you and get to the closing question. Better to track that in the beginning. And I, I don't know that I have my exact numbers at this point, but I'm always looking for uh, a good day is when I'm, is the greater percentage of people are going all the way through, through the, uh, the qualifying questions that I'm asking, and I'm getting them to the point, would you have 10 minutes? Would it be worth 10 minutes of your time to, to look at a presentation to show you how to get that home-based income? If I can get them all the way through that and to watch a presentation, that's a good day. When you start getting there, you're going to find that your numbers begin to go through the roof. That's where the rubber meets the road. So anybody have a question, please raise your hand. Let's see if we have any. Brooke, it doesn't look like it. Let me look at both pages here. doesn't look like it. We sure want to invite you to ask a question. We're here. And uh, if not, we'll take uh, 10 more seconds, see if anybody has a question at all. No one's raising their hand. Brooke, we must have done a great job. Uh, <laughs> okay. okay. Everyone, thank you so much, Brooke. I'm going to leave it to you to close, but I just want to thank all of you for your time and attention. You were very kind and wish you the very, very best with your prospecting, and keep it fun. Brooke, back to you. Yes, thank you for attending today. One, Okay, great. Uh, one last thing, if you have any further questions about Monty and his training, you can go to montytaylor.com. If you have questions about leads, getting leads to try this training out on, go to the website 
the lead store that referred you to this training, you probably got an email newsletter. You can also call us. Our number is 800-881-4742 or send us an email. It is admin, A-D-M-I-N, at leadcustomerservice.com. My name is Brooke. Thank you for attending today. Have a great day, everyone.